Okay, welcome back to the shop. Today we're going to start our AC diagnostic series. And I'm very excited to finally get these videos out to help a lot of you out there save a lot of money because let's face it, AC repairs are very, very expensive. And most shops are not well versed in diagnosing AC concerns. So they throw the most expensive part at it and then work backwards from there. I know a lot of you out there are shaking your head right now. So today we're going to show you how a weak compressor looks on your manifold gauge set. And I stress manifold gauge set because it's going to, as you'll see when we go through this series of videos on diagnosing AC concerns, it's very important to get the low side and the high side reading, not just the low side. It's only part of the story on there. So today we're going to show you exactly what it looks like, what to look for, and then of course what the pressures look like on a properly operating system at the end here. Now there are a few pre-checks you want to do before you start busting out the manifold gauge set and checking pressures. Now the first thing you probably already notice is that there's not much cooling coming out of the vents. Now is it an actual concern or are you just extra hot today and you don't think it's working so good? So what you have to do to verify it is to go for a drive 10 to 15 minutes with the vehicle on max AC and the blower speed on three or four Okay, and you're gonna get that initial heat load out of the vehicle. And then we're gonna see what is actually coming out of the vent. So you're gonna wanna stick a dial thermometer down the center vent, okay? And you should be getting around 36 to 46 six degrees coming out of the vents. So if there's anything above that, let's say 60, 70 degrees coming out of there, something is not right. We need to investigate a little bit further. The next thing you want to verify with the vehicle in park AC system on is that the fans, the cooling fans for the engine actually come on. On all the Ford units, it's in the PCM strategy to turn on the low speed cooling fans to get that airflow across the condenser as soon as the AC is turned on, no matter what. Okay, so be looking out for that. The next thing is you want to make sure your AC compressor is actually turning on. The AC compressor looks a little something like this, okay? And it has a pulley on that's basically an idler. It goes with the belt at all times. What you're looking for is the hub face on here, the clutch itself to be spinning while the engine's running, okay? So let me know the AC compressor is actually being commanded on and coming on. At that point, everything looks good to go. You need to go ahead and bust out your manifold gauge set and start doing some diagnostics. And that's where this video comes in. And here is how it looks when you have a worn compressor. Our low side gauge there is much too high. It's 115 or so. It should be closer to 36 to 45 PSI. And a regular worn compressor is around 60 to 80 PSI. This one's definitely extreme on here. Now on the high side here, you can see the pressure is much too low. So it's 125 or so. It should be around 175 to 225, 250 even, depending on the ambient temperature. Now these scroll compressors do have a refrigerant control valve inside of them uh, that can cause this but as you'll see on this particular vehicle it was just a worn out compressor on there just not pumping the refrigerant through the system now this right here a dial thermometer is the best way to make sure that you really do have an AC concern it can feel like it's not cooling enough but until you get actual readings like this you're not sure now when you first start the vehicle up it's nice and hot outside it's gonna be 60 70 degrees coming out of the vent it has a lot of heat load to work with and deal with and once you get driving along um, it's going to drop down to 36, well, 38, I would say, to 46, okay? Whereas this vehicle, it never dropped below 60 coming out of the vent, so it just wasn't cooling the vehicle down, and of course was not cooling the battery down on this you know, particular hybrid vehicle. Now, while the system is sucking down the refrigerant so I can change this compressor out, let me show you one more thing to check on here. Um, the compressor right here, the pulley, it's just an idler pulley, okay? And it's attached to the dry belt system. The magnet, the magnet, magnetic clutch, I guess you call it, behind there is what sucks this plate to that so it can get power for the shaft inside the compressor to spin. Now, as you can see on this one, I could spin it with my little finger. Not okay. If I can do this, that means nothing inside of there is actually compressing. No matter how much refrigerant I put in there, it's just not going to compress it. It's worn out. You should have to grab it with your hand and really put some effort into it to turn it, and you'll feel the compression strokes in there and all that good stuff. It shouldn't be impossible to turn uh, by hand, but it should have a good amount of resistance. So there's usually a lot of pistons inside of it. 
you got to realize that also. And here you can see the pressures after compressor replacement. Now this is a fully functional, properly operating system. Our low side is right around 35 PSI. It's absolutely perfect considering the ambient temp is, you know, pretty cool, 74 degrees. Uh, so 35 to 45 is good in the low side. And then over here on the high side, 175, can, again, considering the ambient temperature is 74 degrees, is absolutely perfect also so uh, once it gets to around 80 90 degrees in the ambient temp we might see the high side go to 225 250 no sweat but the low side will pretty much maintain um, so you can see 36 37 degrees come out of the vents we're gonna have a, a really good cool down quick cool down on uh, the inside of the vehicle this way that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. There'll be many more like it to come to help you guys diagnose many different concerns that can arise within the AC system.